Hi, this is pharmacist Curtis Alexander. In this video, we'll be talking about Resuvastat side effects. Resuvastat also goes, or used to go by the brand name Crestor, but it's available generic now. Um, whenever we talk about side effects, it's really important to talk about how it works in your body. Once you understand how it works, the side effects begin to make more sense, and sometimes you can predict those side effects. So, Resuvastatin is, is a statin class of medications like Lipitor, Zocor, we have Crestor, uh, which is for suvastatin. And what it does basically blocks an enzyme that is responsible for cholesterol, um, basically production in the body. Now, <laughs> there's been a lot of talk and a lot of it's valid that when you block something as critical as cholesterol, there's going to be side effects and, and we do see those things. So in this video, I'm going to start out with the most serious ones. They're rare, but they are serious if they happen. And then I'll get into some of the more common ones that we see. I'm also going to talk about one of the more common questions I get about side effects and I'll, I'll get to that at the end. So let's hop right into it. Um, biggest thing we are concerned about again this is not common but it is a serious concern is liver side effects usually um, this will go away after you lower the dose or you stop the medication but what we can see is that after one to two months of starting it uh, you can see some of these increases in liver enzymes and and so on and so forth we don't really know why it happens. Again, we're coming back to the HMG being blocked. So we believe it's mechanism of action, but that's still technically up in the air. Uh, what are the risk factors for it? The higher your dose, the more risk you incur. You do need to pay attention to drug-drug interactions. There are certain medications that will cause the blood levels of resuvastatin to go up and we Obviously, you're concerned about those. Make sure your pharmacist does an interaction check with all your medications, including anything over the counter you're taking, okay? Um, other medications that are toxic to the liver, we have to be careful for those. Hepatitis B, uh, B is in boys, so we have to be careful about that. Uh, ETOH is alcohol use. If you drink, something to be aware of. And also if you're 80 years or older, that's also a risk factor. Okay, that's the liver. Um, next we have the muscle side effects. And of, it's thrown around a lot, but we were very concerned about rhabdomyolysis, which is the most severe form. Some people just come up with kind of general muscle pain. That's why we see this range two to 13%. Again, why is this happening? Why is this muscle pain happening? There's theories, one of which is the mevalinate, excuse me, pathway. There's theories that it can change the electrical and the structural uh, functions that are going on. The other one is that we see lower coenzyme Q10 levels. Uh, a lot of providers, if they prescribe a statin, will also say take this with supplement with coenzyme Q10 to minimize those side effects. That can be helpful. Okay, so we don't know exactly why it happens. Those are a couple theories. But at any rate, as far as the risk factors for this, it, it occurs primarily in the first year of use. If you are using it longer than this, unlikely for it to occur. All right, we see it with dose increases. Also, here's that drug interaction thing. You got to make sure you're checking drug interactions. Uh, older age, low thyroid function can be a risk factor for the muscle side effects, which low thyroid is a huge problem in the country. So something to keep an eye on. Your kidney problems, if you're a female, that is a risk factor. And then we have body mass index. A low body mass index actually increases your risk of muscle pain. Uh, heavy exercise. One of the things you'll see this programs like CrossFit that talk about rhabdo and the extreme muscle pain, uh, more kind of along those lines. Surgery can be a risk factor. And then we have what I call the statin spectrum. Um, resuvastatin is a higher risk than atorvastatin and simvastatin and pravastatin. So resuvastatin is a big one for the muscle side effects, okay? Now let's get into some of the more common side effects that we see. 
um, generally less serious, uh, but more common. So the first one is diabetes, new onset diabetes. I wouldn't call it common. We see it in roughly 3% of people. Again, when you are affecting cholesterol synthesis, you affect many things downstream. All right, headache, 6 to 9%. Joint stiffness, 4 to 10%. Nausea, 4 to 6%. Physical weakness, lack of energy, 5%. And remember, cholesterol is involved in many, many processes, one of which is conversion of hormones. So not necessarily surprising that we see some of this. And then constipation, 3 to 5%. So here's a handful of things that I see. And then I had a very good question um, does it affect asthma? You're going to find conflicting evidence. I've seen people report to me that yes, it, it affects their asthma negatively. And there are studies supporting that. The theory is it may worsen asthma control because we see increased airway inflammation. Again, I want to point out this is still up in the air. A lot of people disagree with this. There are studies that go against this but I have had people report it to me and there are studies that support it. So if you're asthmatic, you do wanna tread lightly. So that's rosuvastatin side effects. Let me know in the comments, have you taken it? How did you tolerate it? It helps me, it helps other people who are watching the video learn from your experience. So I appreciate you doing that. I do wanna point out, I look at all the comments as I do more videos, I can't respond to all of them, but please post, it is helpful. So. Speaking of helpful, I hope this was helpful and until the next video, thank you.